Welcome to CAT Tutorials, and in this video, I'll be covering practice problem 10.4. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. So let's get into the question. We are asked to find IO, and IO is indicated over here, given this circuit, right? So the first thing that you notice is that we have a current source in between two loops or two meshes and nothing else along that path, even if there was something along this path. We have a current source between two meshes and this whole thing here qualifies as a super mesh. And here we have IO flowing, right? So we have this and we have the super mesh. So the first thing to do is to label these two meshes which form the super mesh. I'm gonna call that I1. And then the one at the bottom, I'm gonna call it I2. And now we're gonna use this node over here to form a relationship between I1, I2, and the value of our current source. So if you look here, I1 goes in there and the value of, or let's say the current source actually goes into that node. So all of these meet up here and they split to form our I2, which means I2, it goes to I1 plus this one, which is the value of our current source in this case. So this is basically the same just as, as just a constant one, because one with an angle of zero or anything with an angle of zero is the same as just a constant. So you can just leave it like that. So this is our first equation, which we have to work with. The second equation is going to come from the mesh or the meshes, the other meshes which we're going to work with. So here we have mesh, let's just call it mesh IO, which is the mesh which contains our current IO. So starting here on this side, we're going to have 25. This is 25 and the angle is zero, which is just the same as just having 25. So we're going to start with having negative 25 because IO encounters that at the negative terminal first, right? I'm going to go along that path or along that loop or the mesh. So then I have negative 25, then we have plus 10 IO, which is from over there. Then here we have an impedance which is shared, and therefore we have negative J4 IO subtract I1 because it shares with I1. Then I'm going to proceed to the one at the bottom over here, which is just 5, and 5 is also shared between IO and I2. And that will be all for the. This is from the IO mesh, which we just had here. And now we're going to move on to the super mesh. Now, in the super mesh, instead of treating each of these as different meshes, we're actually going to combine the equations. So let's start with the mesh at the top. We're going to have negative J4. I1, subtract IO because it's shared with IO. Then we're going to have J8. This one is not shared with anything. Then we're going to proceed to have negative J6, moving on to the second mesh. Negative J6 multiplied by I2, which is not shared with anything. And finally, we're going to have 5, which is shared with IO. The IO mesh, that is. So we have 1, 2, 3 equations. We have three equations and we have three variables. So all these should help us to ultimately find our IO, but the method which I'm going to use is Kramer's rule. So let's just simplify all of these or let's just group the variables so we can put all of these into matrices, right? So doing that quickly, we are gonna have, let's take IO to be our first variable. So here we have zero IO, we have I1, we have negative I2, which is equals to negative one. We're just grouping all of these as, so basically here's what I'm doing. Let's see, okay. So just basically grouping all of these into, let me see what we have here quickly. So negative I1 plus I2 is equal to that, or we can alternatively say multiplying by minus one, minus that, then that, okay. So this is what we have as our first equation by just grouping IO, I1, I2, and a constant. So this is what I'm going to do in, in this equation as well. So let's group the IOs. We only have 10 IO over here, which I'm seeing. So that's 10 IO. What else do we have? We have 5 IO over there. What else do we have associated with IO? We have negative J4. So 10 plus 5 is 15. Then we have also have negative J4. 
All of these are associated with IO. Then next, let's see what we have. Moving on to I1, because we've covered everything with regards to IO. Moving on to I1, let's see what we have. We have this multiplied by that, which is just J4, and nothing else. So we have positive J4 multiplied by IO, by I1, sorry. Then next, let's look at I2. So here we are. We only have that multiplied by that, which is going to be negative 5 I2, right? Then let's see, let's see, let's see. All that's left is a constant, this constant over here, which is 25, negative 25. Going to take it to the other side of the equal sign. It's going to become positive 25. And this is our second equation. Moving on to the final one, which is from the super mesh. So let's take the ones that have IO. We're going to have positive G4. Then we're going to have negative 5, right? So we're going to have negative 5 plus J4, and these are associated with IO. Looking at I1, we're going to have negative J4. We are going to have positive J8. So J8, multiple, uh, subtract J4. You're going to have J4. That is all for I1. Moving on to I2, let's see, let's see. We have negative J6, and we have 5 over here, which means we are going to have 5, subtract J6. And this is associated with I2. Let's check for constants. Do we have any constants? No, no constants inside. So this is our final equation. So we're going to transform all of these equations into matrices. And that is going to help us to find the determinants. And using Kramer's rule, we're going to find our IO. So here is the newly formed matrix, which is going to come from our equations. So basically you're going to have, so let me just reconfigure this. doesn't really matter. I just want to reconfigure this into, so taking this to this side, we are going to have negative, or just multiplying everything by negative 1. We're going to have negative I1. We're going to have positive I2. There is no uh, particular reason why I'm doing this, just that I wanted to have this side as a positive doesn't really matter. Even if you solve it like this, it's going to give you the same answer. So you can take that as homework. Just work with this and see if you get the same answer. So now, this is the matrix that we're going to form. We're going to have 0, which is the placeholder for IO. Then we're going to have, this is our first equation, by the way, which is this one over here. So I'm just going to list the equations in the matrix. So you're going to have 0. We're going to have negative 1, which corresponds with I1. Then we're going to have 1, which corresponds with I2. And our variables over here, just so you see which is which, equals to, we have a constant of 1 in the first equation, we have a constant of 25 in the second equation, and lastly, we have a constant of 0 in the last equation. Moving on to the second equation, we have 15 subtract J4, then we have J4, then we have negative 5. In the last equation, we have minus 5 plus J4. Then we have J4. And finally, we have 5 subtract J6. So I just trans uh, I just transferred all of the equations into this matrix. And we're going to find the determinant using Kramer's rule. So Kramer's rule says IO. It goes to delta 0. I just named it delta 0. It's the first delta, which is formed after moving this column to the first column of this matrix, divided by just the delta. So this delta is the delta which we find from the original matrix configuration, right? So delta, which is from here, is basically going to look something like this. So you're going to have 0. Subtract that. Then I'm going to have 15 which is from this part. So here, we're going to have 0 multiplying everything. And here, we're going to have... So I use the cross multi cross uh, cross lines method. I don't know what it's called. Just cross there and look at this value over here. That is why we have minus 1. And then we're going to multiply this and that. You can check out my, my tutorial on Kramer's rule if you're confused about this. I'm just going to go through it quickly because Kramer's rule isn't really the focus of this. I'm just using Kramer's rule to solve my problem. So now I have minus 1, then I'm going to have 15, subtract J4, then I'm going to have 5, subtract J6, then I'm going to subtract negative 5, negative 5 plus J4, then I'm going to close that, and add, 
So we're going to have 1 multiplied by 15, subtract j4, multiply by j4, and then this is going to subtract negative 5 plus j4, multiply by j4, closing that. So this delta is going to give us a value of 58, subtract j10. And the second delta, which is formed by moving the this column, so the first column of that matrix, we are basically going to have 1 multiplied by j4, 5 minus j6, subtract negative 5, multiplied by j4. Then we're going to have subtract negative 1. Then we're going to have 25, multiplied by 5, subtract j6. Then we're going to have subtract 0. Right, so this is the this is the second line which you're gonna have in this case. So if you look at here, let me just confirm this. We're gonna have this column over there. And this is the second term. So we're gonna be here, we're gonna cross that, we're gonna have 25 multiplied by that. Then over here we're gonna have zero, obviously, and that is why we have this zero. So that is confirmed. Then we're gonna have plus 25 multiplied by j4 subtract 0. And the value of your delta 0, which you, you expect it to find here, is 149 subtract j10. As I said previously, IO is equal to delta 0 divided by the delta, which is the original delta. And the value which you, sh you should find for your final value of IO is 2.537 with an angle of 5.943 degrees. And the unit for that is amperes.